All right, there we go. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday. It is the Earth Master out here, 9.58 a.m. California time. February 10th, 2025 is the date. Feels like I just said that. Goodness. All right. So we got a, uh, a decent earthquake swarm out here on the San Andreas Fault in Southern California. This is the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. It's been locked and loaded here for uh, over 300 years, and we got a swarm on it specifically right on the uh, on the uh, plate boundary right now uh, it all started off this morning with a little one a little one pointer i believe that's from uh well just after midnight but the intense swarming has taken place right now with uh, some threes involved uh, is right up against the mountain range here right where the san andreas fault pacific plate and the north american plate meet 3.5, a three-pointer, a lot of that activity showing up here on the seismograph stations as noted on the China Lake Station, picking up a lot of that earthquake activity. Uh, Going to have to watch this pretty closely here, folks, because, uh, well, you know, 300 years has passed since we've seen any major rupture out here across the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault, and uh, it's not good. You know, one has to wonder if something like this could trigger uh, the built-up strain that's been out here. Might be a good test here today. It's been a little while since we've seen any uh, specific swarming like this on the San Andreas Fault itself. Of course, up north along the creeping segment and sometimes the park field segment uh, will get some a uh, little bit of swarming. But yeah, this is not what you want to see here on the start of a Monday uh, with earthquake activity directly on a, uh, a fault system. A plate boundary here that's well overdue for an 8.1 earthquake maybe this is where we're going to see our eight pointer maybe not a lot of people think ah nothing's going to happen it's that mindset right there that will make you a statistic you don't want to become a statistic you want to be prepared for uh natural hazards and disasters for uh, well if you want to survive so uh we got to watch that pretty closely got uh you know it looks like the only area that's swarming down here right now and it's just not on a good spot here folks um if anything, it looks like the magnitude level here has been increasing since this morning. Start off as a couple ones, and now we're up in the three range there. Uh, a couple of them. Largest being a 3.5. So this is something to watch pretty closely here today. As uh, the San Andreas Fault is uh, hopefully not coming to life. But one of these days it is, right? We keep putting this off. We keep... Uh, you know, being complacent year after year uh, with this activity right now happening directly on the San Andreas Fault. Not a good day to be complacent. All right, so we continue to watch that pretty closely. A little swarm out there across Los a or the uh, Las Vegas area that is northwest of Las Vegas. This uh, region kicked up last year as well, roughly about the same time we've seen increasing movement out here across Southern California. So this is uh, a good sign of strain out here against the west coast when we see that pressurization inland. Northern California, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on there for now. Uh, Pacific Northwest, relatively scattered activity around the Cascades. Nothing major going on. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Let's go check that out here real quick. See what we got. And we'll check out the Greece activity, which is still ongoing. Uh, a little bit of earthquake activity there at Yellowstone. I see a couple spikes there on the seismograph stations. Nothing big. These are, uh, well, this one right here is, looks like uh, about five hours or so ago. That would probably match up maybe with this, a 1.7. Yeah, so nothing big going on. Just a little small microquake out there today. Um, Texas, rest of the country, pretty quiet aside from the oil fields getting hit. Taking a look here at the Santorini area of Greece. Got uh, continued earthquake activity out here. Uh, the last one, a 4.3 in the mix up here. 4.8 uh, earlier this morning as well. Staying pretty consistent in terms of the mul multitude of counts. If we look at the... Uh, refresh this, make sure this is uh, latest information. I don't know what happened here. The data went offline for a minute. That's why we're not seeing any data over here, but it looks like it just came back on. So I don't know if they did a maybe an instrument adjustment or something there with, with that Raspberry Shake data station, but it went offline. 
Um, I don't think in regards to any, you know, some type of big event out here. It just looks like the data went offline for a minute. Someone may have uh, did something there to uh, adjust it. I don't know. But uh, either way, there's the earthquake activity continuing, uh, mainly focused here across that center portion, uh, just outside the Colombo volcano to the northeast here. Santorini down here. Got all this activity from yesterday. But a, a decent cluster of events, more localized uh, up north here today, uh, originally where that started, as far as that earthquake swarm started down here. Um, but, you know, as we've seen yesterday, migration going on down towards the Santorini area. If we look at the seismograph station, let's refresh this. This is the recorded data in the last 24 hours. Uh, still got, you know, those four pointers here. These red thick lines and blue thick lines that are off the chart are the four pointers, upper fours. And a lot of the smaller ones in here uh, in the background and the foreground here showing uh, some twos and threes out there. So it hasn't gone away. It looks like overnight, similar to the other night, it, it was uh, a little quieter. You can see the seismograph station lines there in the background. Uh, but today it looks like it's kicking back up, ramping back up. Uh, that appears to be the uh, trend out here. Interesting, but uh, no new information here to report on this uh, earthquake activity uh, I'm still thinking this is along the lines of volcanic and uh, we will see here eventually we notice that migration pattern here mainly yesterday towards the Santorini area today's events yes let's see here it's still spread out definitely uh, spread out here in the last 24 hours it's got a linear fashion and it's it's pointing towards the Santorini volcano and that has some potential to be a violent eruption if things are uh, being escalated uh, towards that type of scenario but we'll continue to keep an eye on it folks far as the rest of the globe goes flat scale model earth however you want to look at it uh, mainly what do we got here some fours some fives out there in the Indonesia islands area Got uh, nothing major across Japan for now. Just most of the movement crunching out here across the crunch zone, the Indonesia Islands area, northward into Taiwan. Um, back and forth earthquake activity here yesterday. I was expecting some of this uh, seismic gap zone to fill in in the middle of these five pointers, but uh, that never did happen. Hasn't taken place yet anyway, but uh, yeah, some 5.9, a couple other fives out there around Vanuatu and then Solomon Islands there yesterday. Or I should say late last night, early this morning, uh, but keep an eye on that uh, with that type of bouncing back and forth there. New Zealand 3.2, nothing big going on down there for now. Uh, same for South America. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. I think all eyes right now on Santorini and uh, Southern California where we got that earthquake swarm coming in. By the way, I do have a uh, number of seismograph stations there. The main one to watch is going to be China Lake. That uh, looks like it's picking up some other earthquake activity there in the background as well, some smaller quakes. And the USGS not showing a lot of these smaller ones, but they are legit earthquakes happening there. Um, the latest one they're showing, a, a 1.9, but as you can see here, when we bring the amplitudes down a little bit, there's a number of quakes here in the last few minutes. Maybe they'll get to them. Maybe they won't. Either way, it's a swarm on the San Andreas Fault. All right, space weather activity here real quick. See what we got for the sun. All things going down in terms of the flaring activity out here. Really not expecting any major flaring here for now. There is a area out on the eastern limb here. It's a fairly large coverage area, but it's just got this one little central core area, and it doesn't look all that uh, fancy. In fact, uh, it looks like it may be decaying a little bit, but we'll continue to watch that area. Our active region over here is uh, saying goodbye off on the western limb. So we're going to enter into a little quiet period here of solar flaring. Uh, Aurora possibilities here continue tonight over the next couple nights there's been a number of coronal holes that have been facing us that's just your typical high-speed solar wind stream that uh, can have an enhancement on the uh, aurora activity 
So we'll watch for that over the next couple nights here. It's been off and on uh, this morning and last night with the Auroras up to almost a G1 class storm, not because of any CME, mainly due, 100% due because of the uh, coronal holes that have been facing us. Uh, let's check out the close approach asteroids here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Where am I? Oh, there we go. How did I miss that? I was right over it. It's a Monday. I can use that excuse, right? Uh, pretty safe out there. Really safe. I was looking at uh, 2024 YR4 last night, and uh, it looks like this thing's going to get really close to the Earth in 2032. Um, these uh, statistics here of it impacting the planet go up and down, and they will continue to do so. But uh, we'll, I want to make a specific video on this. So you guys can see uh, what I'm seeing and, and how close of an impact or how close of a potential impact this could be in 2032 and what we can do to, uh, you know, potentially divert that asteroid from uh, hitting the planet. Because they do have the technology, right? It's been done to make even a slight adjustment um, in regards to maybe offsetting the course of that asteroid. Not a huge asteroid. It's uh, up to 100 meters. And that's actually pretty big, right? If you really think about it, up to maybe oh, 300 feet or so. That uh, would do some damage if it hit the ground. It's a pretty solid chunk of an asteroid, too. It's not a loose uh, bunch of rocks or any uh, uh, light material. It's a pretty hefty, not an iron uh, material, but uh, definitely a solid rock. 2024 YR4 is, and uh, it could do some damage. Definitely hit the ground uh, if that were to uh, make that close approach there on 2024 or uh, 2032. But we'll check that uh, on another date because that's going to take a little while. Uh, severe weather, not a whole lot there in the next coming days. California and Southern California, well, Northern and Southern California. We've got a decent amount of precipitation coming this way. We'll put the model into motion. Looks like the first storm here um, weakened a little bit. That was mainly aimed at Southern California. They're going to get rain. Um, but it looks like more so from the second storm system here. So, yeah, enjoy. Um, hopefully it doesn't flood too bad down there in Southern California, but I know you guys need the snow and the rain. After that, we enter back into this boring pattern where high pressure out on the West Coast brings a cold air down here across the rest of the country. So, uh, man, February looks awfully cold for areas east of the country, east of the Rockies here. California high and dry after uh, this week's storm. So, all right, uh, I'm out of here, folks. Keep your eyes on the San Andreas Fault. Any type of swarming there uh, on on the San Andreas Fault. Obviously, that's well within triggering range, right? It's directly on this area. Be prepared. Uh, today could be the day. Maybe it's not. You know, I see comments every day. Oh, nothing's gonna happen. <laughs> I'm sure a couple of folks are laughing right now. Well, because I read those comments, but those comments right there, um, you know, it's showing complacency. It's not good. Got to be prepared here because that's, uh, that's interesting, right? Right on the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault, we have a swarm today. We'll catch you guys later. I will be watching this throughout the day with this activity uh, stirring up right now. That's definitely got my interest. I'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening.